All right, let's begin with our major tip. The first thing we can say about how to make a good graphic. And that is K-I-S-S, -S, KISS. Keep it simple. And the last S is stupid, for stupid people, right? Keep it simple, stupid. Keep your presentation graphics simple. Keep your visual helpers easy to understand. This is the most important thing to emphasize. And it's very often overlooked. Again, because it seems so much fun to make little pictures flying around, but that makes things complicated, not simple. Keep it simple and sweet is the nice way to say it. I like to say, keep it simple, stupid. Keep it simple for stupid people. But an easier way or a nicer way is keep it simple and sweet. This means your graphics will be best when you avoid making them complicated or complex. A simple design is often the easiest for your audience to understand. And visual aids should expand what you say, not just repeat it, right? They should make things easy to understand. And this is the key point. The graphics kind of add something, but you don't need to explain the graphics making your presentation even more complicated. So these graphics are something to use very carefully. The information you put on your visual aid must match what you are saying all of the time. You need to make sure that the things that you're talking about are the same as your graphics. That doesn't have to be a repeat, but the graphics are making it easier to understand your main point. I think we get back to this main point over and over again. The meaning of the visual aid must be very clear easy to understand, right? Keep it simple and sweet. Design should be professional quality and a professional presentation means there's no errors in your slide. Now this is easy to say and hard to do. This is another problem with making your PowerPoint slides so long and complicated. You're just increasing the chances to make a mistake, like a spelling mistake, or some kind of formatting mistake, or your numbers and your tables are not quite right. If you have fewer slides, fewer graphics, then you can be more careful to make sure you have no mistakes. But if you have more, you're going to have more mistakes. You just can't help it. So be careful about that. The most common errors are spelling errors, strange capitalization, and spacing errors. And one mistake we often see that is very, very common is that when we're moving from our Chinese into our PowerPoint or changing into English from Chinese, we often see information copied or moved from maybe your Word into your PowerPoint. And then the formatting gets weird because the font is a Chinese font rather than an English font, or the spacing is the Chinese spacing, or the period or the comma is the Chinese comma. This looks very unprofessional and confuses people. So be careful and try to make sure your formatting is all very complete and correct. A main point that is easy to overlook is this idea of where do you get your graphics from? Of course, it's easy just to grab a picture from the internet and put it in your slide. No one will notice. Well, the problem with that is it looks unprofessional. It can look really low quality. It can also be something somebody already knows and they're saying, hey, you just copied that from the internet. That's not even your research. That's not even your main point. And if you're working at a company, this can be quite serious because your presentations represent the company. If you actually copy a photo from a site that's licensed or trademarked, and then you use it inside your company presentation, your company could be sued in court because that's copyright theft or trademark violation. 
So you need to be very careful. Now, of course, often when we're students, we're practicing our presentations, we don't worry that much because we're just inside of a room practicing. But even today, we record our presentations, put them on YouTube, we practice and show them to other people, there's still a danger. So you really should be careful about this. If you're presenting your own research, try to make the graphics yourself or pay for a service. It can cost very little money, 10, 20, 50 US dollars for one month to be able to use all different graphics that you then have a license for. So don't copy from the web. Copying graphics from the web is like stealing someone's work and it's against copyright law. It seems very easy just to click on a picture and copy it, but the pictures are all copyrighted and not free. They're not just free for anyone to use at any time. You wouldn't want someone to take your pictures, would you? If you make your presentation in front of others, someone may notice that you've stolen your pictures and that would look very uh, negative. There's another way that's safe and looks much more professional and that is you can buy a CD or a uh, hard disk sometimes or a uh, memory stick full of graphics at your local, local software store or online. You can buy a service where you can get one month or more than a month or sometimes you can buy a whole CD and it has thousands, hundreds of graphics inside that you can then use with a license where you're allowed to use them. So look into that. Stock photos and graphics are often very inexpensive and that's the word we use for these. They're called stock photos. Stock photos. Right, stock photos are photos or graphics that you pay for and you're allowed to use in your presentations. You may have seen these before, such as companies like uh, Shutterstock, maybe you've seen some advertisements for them, or you can buy CDs like this, very common, I've bought these in Taiwan, or you can have a subscription service. I think here's an example, 29, less than 30 US dollars for one month. And you can pay just for a month and then stop it when you're done. Pretty cool. Be careful of sites that say they're free or open source or royalty free. Now this is a very serious problem. I always have a hard time to explain to my friends and students. And that is they'll say, well, I got this graphic from a site that says it's for free or this website says you can use these graphics for free or there's a website that's royalty free or there's a website that's open source. Now that may be true and there are some sites like that. The problem is you don't know for sure that the photo or the graphic that's been uploaded is really open license for you to use. There's no way to be sure. It's also possible someone could upload a graphic or a photo and they say it's royalty free, but then when you use it, a year later, they change their license and now your photo, your presentation has their photo and you could be sued over that. The best thing that happens is you have to remove your presentation or delete it. The worst thing that happens is you actually get involved in a lawsuit. So this is very troublesome and there's no easy solution. There's no real way to know. Did this person who uploaded tell the truth or did they not tell the truth? Will this change in the future or not change? And a problem that I've seen many times is people will buy these CDs. So we have like these CDs here, right? Then they will take the photos in those CDs and upload them to a website and the website says these are for free. But in reality, they're not free. They were stolen by someone and then uploaded to, to a website. So what are you gonna do? Well, you don't know because the website says that it's free or open license or open source. 
but you have no way to know. And I've seen many of these graphics that I paid for uploaded to those kinds of sites. So that is very dangerous. There's only one way to really be sure, and that is for you to pay a company where you have the license and you can see it and you can read it. And in the future, if there's a problem, you can say, you can prove, I bought this from company ABC. I bought this from Shutterstock. I bought this from this CD company that has CDs in their graphics, in their CD. So we need to stay very clear on this. There's only one way to be sure. I'm very adamant about this. You know, it's just like using everything you like to use on the internet for free. Think about it for a minute. Is there something free? Can it be free? Can there be something for free? You use Gmail for free. Is it for free? Does it cost nothing? It must cost something, right? This video is going to be on YouTube. Is YouTube free? Well, no. You have to watch advertisements. And then YouTube, the company Google, is using my work to make money for them. And they're using your time to make money for them. So no, it's not for free. If you find photos or graphics on the internet that are free, you should be suspicious that nothing in this world is for free. The rule of thumb is if you didn't pay for it, you don't own it. If you didn't pay, then you don't own it. If you need to upload your graphic, it now belongs to someone else. That's another key point I've seen people forget. Sometimes they upload their pictures or their graphics to like a software like Canva. You upload your graphics and then you use other people's graphics, but now your graphic is open for other people to use. It doesn't belong to you anymore. Anything you put onto these websites like Facebook belongs to them. So you need to think about these ideas. If it belongs to them, someone else could use it, or they could sell it to someone else. Now who owns it? It's very complicated. So see if you can just pay for your graphics or make them yourself.